Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Retro Champ Premium Bundle from My Arcade. So the Premium Bundle comes with the Retro Champ, two controllers, and a 12 foot HDMI. This is made by My Arcade, and I have looked at a few of their products on my channel in the past, and I have not been a big fan. Haven't played with everything that they've made, so I can't give them an overall judgment, but the few little things I have used, I haven't really liked. But this product interests me. It, it was kind of intriguing, so I wanted to share this with you guys today. This premium bundle is the only way I've been seeing this sold right now, um, whereas the Retro Champs, I haven't seen it sold by itself, so I don't know if it's available that way at the moment, but this is the way it shipped to me. Came with these two controllers, these Super Game Pads, which are just repurposed uh, from their Super Nintendo Classic line, so these were meant for the SNES Classic Edition. You get two of them in this bundle. This 12 foot HDMI cable, which I really don't need, but you know, it's a premium bundle. You're paying a premium price for all this stuff. Uh, this bundle is like $110, where the Retro Champ should only be about $80 by itself. So, the Retro Champ, here it is. What is it? <laughs> kind of looks like one of those Amazon Echo or Google like home display things but it plays NES and Famicom cartridges. Has a seven inch display. You can use these wireless controllers with it. They do sync to it without using the dongle. That's a good thing. Three to five hours play time on the internal battery. Kind of, I don't know, the packaging's fairly generic. It looks like something out of China, maybe Japan. I, I don't know. Um, I haven't really looked at everything that my arcade does, but this packaging kind of screamed a little bit like, uh, you know, Chinese clone system, which essentially that's what this is. It's a clone system. Now we can't kid ourselves. Clone systems for the NES, they haven't really like, you know, blown it out the, you know, the, the park yet with uh, the performance on these things, unless they're like a higher end, like an FPGA based system. So, they usually have issues with sound and color uh, and the way things perform. And, and I'm gonna showcase how this works in a second here. Plays both original NES and Famicom cartridges, has a 4,000 milliamp hour a rechargeable battery built in, seven inch backlit LCD screen with four, three and 16, nine aspect ratio. That's the one good thing because I was, I was not sure with this because all the marketing and everything you see, it just shows it in widescreen. I don't want to play NES games in widescreen. So that was kind of one of the things I was hesitant on because none of their listings state that. But I seen in a pre like promotion video, it showed it in 4.3. So I was hoping like that wasn't something that was just for show, but this actually does have that built in. So nice, uh, compatible with the super gamepad controllers, which we have right there. Side of the box, nothing special, nothing crazy going on there. Uh, let's just go ahead and open this up, show you what it comes with so the first thing that we get in here and i wasn't sure what the hell this was at first um because it looks like you could pop in like a <laughs> like like it's a cartridge adapter um which they do have a cartridge adapter and we're gonna look at that in another video because i actually think it's really neat it might be the best my arcade uh you know product out there i don't know but this is actually not for that this is based off of uh that mold what it is, is if you have a problem ejecting Famicom games, you could use this to push them out. I'll kind of try to show that in a second because it's kind of interesting. Um, so there's that. Also, we get our power supply, which I haven't even looked at yet. I just wanted to show it in that big brown box because it's just kind of weird. That's the way it ships. But I guess that's, you know, if they're going to bundle it up, how else are they going to do it? They're not going to make special packaging. But there you go. A uh, little power supply actually says retro champ on it very nice i like when companies do that because then i know the, the power supply goes with that device when they actually have the name on there that's a good thing so five volts 1.5 amp little micro usb port good stuff and then to get the actual retro champ out so i'm gonna i'm gonna demonstrate this being played uh both tabletop mode and through hdmi uh, because there's going to be some really big differences there. So there's the device. Comes with a, a manual that's thick, like really thick, double C thick. But really, it's only a couple pages because it's in like 500 languages. Um, yeah, you know, you might need to reference this. I don't know. I don't. I don't really care. We don't need no manuals. 
Uh, don't have uh, broken cartridges inserted. Uh, this is the thing showing you how to use this to eject Famicom carts. And oh, put uh, batteries in the controller. That's why they're not pairing. They do use uh, triple A's, these little bastards. But here we go. Here is the... Uh, I saved that part for you guys. Get the hell out of here. So here it is. So this is like a handheld. Boom, you can play. Or you can uh, bust out the stand. Do a little bit of that action. See me there? Hey, what's up? A little, uh, you know, set it up like that. We're going to rearrange the uh, camera angle so you get a good look at this in a second when we power it on. Um, on the back here, we do have an HDMI out. Uh, so you can plug it to your HDTV. Controller 1 and Controller 2, these are just like LEDs that light up. And then, like, they they go solid if you have a controller connected to it. Kind of interesting. Volume up and down. What else do we have? This is the Famicom slot. Fingering that slot a little bit. The NES slot. The flaps don't seem too bad. I mean, they got some good flap action going on there. This is like a, a release thing to get the uh this out the uh cleaning kit but it's kind of a pain in the ass oh i i guess i've worked it in a little bit uh because the first time i tried doing that i i struggled man but there we go press a little button this part i kind of struggle too oh bitch uh you get a little bottle doesn't come with no liquids they don't ship it with liquids you got to put your own uh isopropyl alcohol whatever you get some uh, Q-tips. Nice of them. I mean, that's kind of neat. I think that's cool that they uh, they incorporated that into this design. That's that's an interesting thing. You know, ready to go. I'd rather use a one-up card, but hey, uh, you know, if, if you're in a bind, boom. Let's get it going. So there's that. What else do we have? On the front, we have our A and B. Our D-pad, a reset button, select and start up top. We do have stereo speakers. Boom, left and right. Power switch and the aspect ratio switch is up top right there. 4369, headphone jack, charging port, and the light to indicate if it's charging, if it's full, uh, if it's about to die, it like flashes on you there. So good stuff. Um, kind of good stuff anyway. That's where the good stuff may end. Now, the one thing I want to point out before we power this on is it's got a little bit of heft to it. It feels good. I'm not going to lie. It has a nice weight to it and a nice feel to it, even though it kind of looks wonky. It's neat. The little indentations, the inverted butt cheeks, you know, kind of dipped in. It feels nice in your hands. You know, put your little index finger back there, just kind of rest. But the A and B and the D pad, I don't know how to explain it. Maybe you guys will get what I'm saying here. When you're pressing them, it feels hollow. It has like a hollow feel to it. Um, they don't feel horrible. It just has that hollow feel like there's nothing behind it. I don't know how else to explain it, but overall it doesn't feel bad. The one thing I notice, I don't even know if I'm just tripping here, but like the right uh, directional on the D pad, like it feels like it's lower than the left. Like somebody's just like continually held it down. I don't know. It just, that's the way it feels to me. I, I, I could just be tripping. I don't know. There's that. Pull that out. So there we go. Let's go ahead and rearrange the angle. Okay. So a few things that I wanted to do here was get a couple cartridges to test out, uh, like EverDrive. So I have the uh, EverDrive N8 Pro, the Famicom version. I do have an EverDrive N8 NES version. So I definitely want to test those. That's going to be very important. A couple original games. Uh, for both the NES and Famicom. I'm um, thinking about popping this in there as well. This is a, a translated version. It uses the original board, but it plays Final Fantasy 1 and 2 in English, so it has like a little translation board on there. I want to test that, see if that works. Uh, and then I have like a indie release, Haunted Halloween 86, Metal Storm from Retrobit. want to see if it plays those kind of cartridges. As you see... I do have Super Mario Brothers 3 in there, and it's running it. Um, I do have the little controller synced up. I don't really want this to be a review of the controller, but I have to give my 
impressions on this thing. I'm surprised in a way. The quality doesn't seem too bad on this controller, but it's it's so tiny. It's so little. <laughs> like, I like the form of it, but it's just so small for me. But I guess I'm kind of used to it. It's a Super Nintendo controller. We're just playing an NES, you know, game on here. So it's kind of, you know, it, a little more than what you need. Takes two triple A's. Got the N loops in there. Let's go ahead and test this out. Now, as you see, 4-3 aspect ratio. We could stretch it. 16-9. We don't want that. Let me go ahead and zoom up. So you can get a better idea of the quality and the sound, I guess. But let's just go ahead and play for a minute and then comment on it. So just immediately, the first thing I could tell, and it's the same with all these clones, these uh, cheaper clones, the colors and the sound are definitely not perfect. Using this controller, uh, there's a little bit of lag. I'm not going to be a lag snob, though, because honestly, it responds well enough for me, and you can kind of adjust to it. Some people won't even notice it at all. For me, the lag is not really that bad. Um, I could definitely play this game without issue. Uh, spoke too soon. That was my bad, though. Um, but I do feel like using the built-in controls function, you know, just fine as well. But like I said, they do have that kind of hollow feel. Um, and the lag seems a little less than using the, uh, the wireless Super Gamepad controllers. This actually feels better, but the one problem is... My, you know, the my arcade, their screens, they never use the best quality screens. As you see, it kind of dims. Um, left and right's not too bad. Left and right's actually pretty good as far as viewing angle. You might get a little glare. This is so shiny. It's so hard to record. Um, but up and down, it definitely dims, and it's kind of harder to get that nice, you know, look. But there's that. Um Ah, see, and I moved it around, glitched the game. That's the one thing with these portables. Um, so that worked. Let's go ahead and swap to something else. God, it, it, it does hold these tight. There we go. Let's go ahead and try uh, Metal Storm, see if this boots up. Sometimes these clone consoles, they don't want to play uh, these things. That it always always with the uh the retro champ splash screen, so you don't even know if it's gonna play the game yet. But it's 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 running. Good stuff. And as you can see, the visuals, um, like I said, they're they're colors aren't gonna be perfect. Um, it is like composite. Sometimes some of these games look really bad on this screen. Uh, like worse than if I was using RF on an original NES. So that's kind of a disappointment. I wish they would have, you know, done a little higher resolution here with this because plugging it in the HDMI, you get 720. And it, it's, you'll see in a second, it's not too bad. But with that, you get different colors and different, you know, sounds. So it's, it's kind of a weird trade off. So there you go. It, it runs a, uh, you know, a third party company's cartridge, Retrobit's uh, cartridge, which Retrobit, their newer stuff is all like to spec and whatnot. Um, so I would be surprised if these didn't work on certain things. It's worked on all the clone consoles I've used it on, except for the Retron 5. So there's that. I'm going to assume Haunted Halloween's going to work. Let's try a Famicom game. So Famicom games, it's a bit weird. So we could pop in say a standard Famicom cartridge, bam, and it's fine. 
it sits just, you know, fine. You could set it up and stand it. But now if you wanna, if you wanna use a non-standard size, you're gonna have to hold this thing because it's obviously not gonna stand. So even if we were to use the brand new uh, EverDrive N8 Pro Famicom version, it's gonna stick out because the same size cartridge, same as same cartridge as that. Let's see if this Final Fantasy boots up. Like I said, this is a translated cartridge. There we go. The, the speakers do come through loud. There's a little kind of hard to show this without banging the cartridge and glitching it out. I don't know what's going on with the sound there. Let's throw in Mario USA. Let's see, these kind of, they can flop around, so it could glitch the game. Just gotta be careful with it, especially if you're playing it in handheld mode. Uh, to sync this controller, you just hit the home button. And these controllers actually work very nicely, I think. Ah, oh, shit. So, so far playing this on the screen, the screen is definitely not amazing. I mean, there's, there is no freaking denying that. Um, I wish it was a higher quality screen. So we got that out of the way. We're going to test this on the HDTV in a second. But before we do that, I know everybody's going to want to know, do the EverDrives work? So let's plug them in. As you see, I haven't had too much of an issue with Famicom carts getting stuck in there but it's kind of hard to show, but there's these tabs on the inside. There are these tabs that if something is inserted from the top, it will push the cartridge out. Um, it's like on the bottom. I don't know if you could see that, but there's these little tabs. Once something's in here, it pushes it down so you can't have like a game in there. See what I mean? We have an NES game in there, so this won't plug in. So if this was plugged in and it was kind of stuck, you couldn't get a good grip on it. If you plugged in an NES cartridge, it would push that out. A neat little feature, but let's go ahead and see if the EverDrive works. And first boot, nothing. I didn't see the light flash or anything. That's the one problem um, is these things, they don't want to power the EverDrives because the EverDrives do require a little bit more, you know, power. And if you don't have enough, it's just not going to work. Yeah, lights don't flash or anything on the cartridge. Yeah, that's that's not working. And there's nothing wrong with this whatsoever. And then the EverDrive N8 Pro. That's plugged in firmly. I hate that splash screen. As if the game's playing music when it boots up, you see that freaking splash screen. <sighs> yep. So flash carts are not working. It does say on the packaging, like, hey, um, not every game is going to work. Like, it doesn't work with everything. So it probably means flash carts. Yeah, but see... The gameplay audio was playing while that stupid flat splash screen was on. I hate that. But there's that. I'm not that excited about this screen. But let's go ahead and plug it into an HDTV and see how it performs. See what it looks like. Wow. So what did you think of that Super Mario audio? That was amazing stuff, right? Holy crap. Like I said earlier, between tabletop mode... Handheld mode, whatever. This thing wants to be a Switch, an NES Switch. Okay, cool. Or plugged into the HDMI. The colors are different, and the audio is drastically different. The audio is worse plugged in through HDMI, and it's just crazy. Like, this is just such a huge turnoff. The visuals, 720p, I mean, it's not the worst I've seen a clone system do, but it's definitely not the best either. For the price, it should be a hell of a lot better, but this is just such a turnoff. My weenus just straight shriveled up and like 
it, it disappeared. This is just ridiculous. Like this device. See, this is the thing, guys. People will review products. They'll they'll either praise every damn thing in the world um, because they hope they get free stuff all the damn time. Um, or if they bought something, they want to justify their purchase and, and just neglect, you know, all the uh, the negatives. Me, I'm just honest. I spent my own damn money on this, and it's 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 garbage. I don't want it. Why did I buy this? I bought it so I would share it with you guys to let you see what quality you would get out of this, what to expect from this device to help you make as an informed decision as possible. And this man, like I, my arcade, I just don't know what these guys, I want to like this device, but I just can't, I don't like it. I like the idea. I just don't like the implementation. It's just the screen quality is not that great. Um, the visuals outputting through HDMI, uh, passable for some people, but that audio, what the heck, what's going on here? Just ridiculous. I thought maybe my capture software was tripping, but I plugged this into a different TV and listened to it. And I was like, this is, this is crazy. What were these guys thinking? Like, th this is what happens is all these companies who make clone consoles, the cheap clone consoles, every single one of them, they get the parts from the same people in China. And sometimes they'll have like very minor differences done with them. Uh, you know, the systems on a chip and whatnot. And that's where you'll get the variances with the colors and the audio. And this one, my God, this is probably the worst audio I've heard on an NES clone system. Just ridiculous. So I really hope this video was helpful, insightful, whatever you want to call it. Hope it helped. Really do appreciate you guys hanging out with me. And with that said, I will catch y'all next time. Peace out. Bye-bye. And boom. Bye.